Well, this afternoon, uh, the latest Joy News polls is suggesting that majority of Ghanaians hold the view that President Ekufado is underperforming in his second term of office. Uh, when we ask the question, could, uh, do you believe that President Ekufado has performed better in his second term? Here's what um, Ghanaians had to respond to uh, on our Twitter handle. So there you have it uh, with the Joy News handle, Joy News on TV. Has the president performed better in his second term of office? Uh, just paltry 11.8% saying yes, 88.2% um, saying no, 1,942 uh, votes so far. Well, uh, the voices in the diaspora are beginning to speak about that. Uh, joining me in studio now is uh, Benjamin Kofi Kwashi. He's chairperson of the NDC Council of Elders in South Africa. Such a pleasure to be talking to you, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you very it's much. Good to be talking to you. And uh, of course, knowing that uh, you, you, the voices from outside are beginning to join the developmental discourse, there's the question as to whether or not indeed your party should be the alternative. Uh, because some say if it's not the NPP, we shouldn't only be thinking about the NDC, there could be other options available. I think we should, we should as a country uh, be realistic when it comes to that opinion. Mm. Um, both political parties have got things that they've done that have not inured to the benefit of our citizenry. And I think that the parties have their manifestos that we vote for when, when they come with their manifestos. The NDC has always um, aligned itself with helping the people socially from down, spiral up. And um, I think we, 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 we have seen what the MPP has been able to do, uh, quite, quite disturbing, quite uh, disheartening, but I think the NDC is the alternative. Uh, why should that be the case, particularly some, when some say, well, we've seen the NDC, we've seen your faults, and, and one of the biggest uh, challenges you had was the energy crisis. Um, well, <laughs> this, this government says, well, yeah. they've addressed the problem. Well, this government cannot say they address the energy crisis. They know that the energy crisis ended under President John Mahama. But the truth of the matter is this. Ghanaians went to the polls and decided to give the MPP uh, to rule us for some time. We have seen what they have done compared to what the NDC has done. We've looked at the cost of living. We've looked at the, the economy. And you can pointly say that it's not going well. It's, it's neither here to say NDC, MPP, but as Ghanaians, we see things are not working out. If you say things are not working, and that's where uh, many say, I mean, we're even fortunate that you're coming from South Africa. It's a, it's a global crisis, a problem that uh, almost all nations ac across the, the world are facing. Uh, why should Ghana's case be peculiar and, and, and be addressed or linked directly to the Akufuado administration. Very well. Other countries have also gone through COVID. Other countries have faced the Russia-Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. But the rapid approach with which they are harnessing their economies to grow, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we don't say it with the Ghana system. Mm -hmm. Other countries are putting in robust measures to help them grow, such as uh, encouraging entrepreneurial development, encouraging citizenry to, to actually help in growing the country. But unfortunately, in Ghana, we can see clearly that uh, the help is not coming, and even though the help is not coming and Ghanaians are doing their best, we can see that the government is not helping the situation at all. Are you leaving out the Ukraine, Russian, Ukraine war, COVID-19? Ghana is, not the, all, only, Ghana is all, not the only the country. The it, issues we are getting uh, we get it, we get it, but others are coming out. I'm not saying okay. the problem is not there, okay. but the approach with which other countries are solving it, the seriousness with which they are harnessing their economies from down up, we don't see it with Ghana. Let's talk about the solutions. Um, wh where do we start from? Because the economy is key to every Ghanaian. Uh, we see that the figures are, are dropping. You are a businessman yourself, so you appreciate how the economy operates. Wh where should we be starting off from as a people? I think as a people, we need to accept and acknowledge the fact that the economy is paramount, irrespective of our political coloration. That is the key point. When we believe that it's neither NDC or NPP, the economy grows, we all grow as a country. That is a cardinal point to, to changing the spiral tide that we have. And again, I think that as a people, we need to encourage more entrepreneurs among ourselves. Um, recently, the Ministry of Finance placed a cap on government recruitment. So others that have completed school and believe that they will go to mainstream government employment are backlogged at home. So if the 
the, the economy allows for entrepreneurs to be grown and harnessed, we wouldn't be having the problem that we have. And fine, uh, you, 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 you get to know from the South African principle that for now, they are concerned about raising domestic workers. They are raising domestic business people, entrepreneurs among themselves, to grow their economy. And it's working perfectly. Uh, is that the only challenge you see with the Akufuado uh, second term? I think Akufado's second term has been a disaster, to call it, uh, to, to put it in, in, in uh, lighter terms. Um, I think when, when the administration started, they, they became complacent along the way, especially when they got off of the IMF program, they thought they have done it all. Then they went on a spiral spending, which has culminated in the problem that we have. I think if they should look at what Ghanaians are saying vis-a-vis the promises they gave in their manifestos to come into power. I'm sure they would see that they've not been fair to Ghanaians and they've not been fair to the economy. You've been in politics for a while. Some say it's the natural eight-year political cycle that's setting in. I, I disagree, but again, I think that Ghanai our mindset have been tuned into that eight-year cycle. So we believe a government comes in after eight years. Uh, if it's not able to do what it has to do, another has to come in. But you see, when we do that, we truncate our development. When we, when we want to focus on eight years that a party comes, that's what it wants to do, leaves, another party comes, that's what it wants to do, that leaves, we wouldn't grow. It would be truncated for a, a, a form of development. So I think we should look at parties staying in power when they are doing things right. Obviously not the Akufadu administration. They can't stay well. But you're making the, the point for the NPP. They say they are breaking the eight. You're just making the point. For they them. can never. The fact that yeah. we don't always have to change after every eight. Exactly. You don't always have to change when the person is doing things right. You don't always have to change when the person is doing things right. But the NPP administration, day in, day out, does things that are wrong. So how do you maintain them? Tell me, how do we maintain a government that doesn't listen to its citizenry? A government that believes that what they say is final? A government that doesn't want an all-inclusive government? How do we grow? At least you have that. You can say that about Nanadu, and I'm not saying that's what I believe as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your opinion of Nanadu. But some say after eight years, obviously the MPP will get, get a new leadership. If they break the eight, they may have a new face. A, a it's new impossible. It, it, it's a practically impossible president. for them to break the eight. Um, they will get a new face, but with the same old policies. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we know the front runners for the, the, the replacement of Nana Akufuado. They are people that are in, in his government. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that can be done in 2005, they should be able to be doing it now. And they are not doing it. Your own party, the NDC, you're not even done with reorganization as we speak. Uh, you're just coming out from the 10th National Delegates Congress. Some say you have uh, fragments of uh, this whole division to, to, to deal with uh, that's emerging. I mean, rancor within your party that you need to deal with. And beyond that, ultimately, you would now have to go on that search for the next presidential candidate. We, and, and, and the concern is you're not a united front as we speak. The NDC is united. Our Congress elected um, executives that have made everybody aware that we are ready for power. Um, I don't know where it's coming from that we are not united uh, because we are, we, after Congress, we have become a one family. We've, we've moved on from Congress. Congress has elected executives. The party has agreed that these are the elected executives that are going to take us into election 2024. So I don't see where we are not. But as a party, you understand that there are people that have differences within a party. It's, it's, a, it's an institution. There will be differences here and there. But the NDC's major concern now is rallying the grassroots, the party, and making sure that we win to And when you have sensitive people, uh, and I'm using the word sensitive because of the role he uh, played previously, the likes of uh, uh, Robert Nunu, uh, I mean, Rojo Metal Nunu, mm -hmm. raising concerns, for instance, about how already you're giving an upper hand to John Mahama, uh, there are fears that you, you have a lot to deal with in terms of mending uh, the faults within your political party. Dr. Dufour and his camp have already started raising concerns about how you're placing one candidate over the other. The NDC is not fit for, for purpose, you agree? One thing I can say <laughs> heartily and happily is that the NDC is a democratic party. Dr. Dufour, others will be giving the platform for them to campaign, for them to come and tell us what they want to do, and the delegates will vote. It's clear, we call President Mahama the presumptive leader because we know what President Mahama has done before. President Mahama had his flaws. President Mahama has gone into opposition. President Mahama has learned and listened to what Ghanaians have said. He's had consultations with various institutions in the country, various bodies, various groups. And I'm sure that coming back as a president, he is the right person that we believe 
That notwithstanding the fact that there will be an election, whoever wins, wins. But we say we believe in President John Dramani Mahama and we want to give him the go. Your party has not put out the date for, for that contest, but already we're getting a sense of how much a presidential candidate would have to pay. 500,000 Ghana cities, that's the bounty being placed on this. Are you not selling the party? Like, basically, that's, that's what you're doing in the NDC. No, we are not selling the party. The truth of the matter is that um, the party is in opposition. 500,000 in opposition. The party is in opposition. And if you want to believe and convince people to vote for you or believe that you are a leader that wants to lead the NDC party, I think the least you can do is to contribute towards organizing That's the That's a lot of money, sir. Yes, but look at the economic conditions we find ourselves in. Yeah, precisely why you don't have to charge that amount of money. 500,000, well, okay, well, you, you are a businessman. You're fortunate you can afford that. Yes. But for someone who has the idea, who say, well, I can lead the NDC, you're telling the person if you don't have 5 billion old Ghana cities, yes. you, you can't lead the NDC. No, you, 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 the truth of the matter is that this is the fee that have been proposed by uh, okay. the Functional Executive right. Committee and NEC. Okay. I believe that there were consultations before they came to that figure. Whatever it is, if any other party that feels that they cannot raise the money have concerns, genuine concerns, they can go back to the National Executive Council and their decision will be taken. Don't you feel it's too much on the higher side? I don't think so. I, I think that looking at the cost that was involved in organizing our Congress, the cost that was involved in organizing our conference. I think um, things, are, things are difficult, things are hard, but to get things done, the party being able to rally all the grassroots to get us to, to victory 2024, it's, it's not on the highest. There are lessons you need to learn from the 2020 general elections, uh, and one of them is the fact that you're not able to collate your own results. Uh, there is, first of all, the question about the NDC apologizing to the people of Ghana that basically you lied, you created a false impression um, that, that you had won the 2020 elections. Um, false impression, I don't know what, what, what we'll make of that. But the truth of the matter, as our, uh, our chairman, General Asiedu Nketi, has said, um, there were challenges we faced during the coalition of our results. There were challenges we faced um, with results coming in from branches, from constituencies here and there. But the, the, the good thing is that he has come out to say, look, this is a challenge we face. We were not able to handle it properly. But going into election 2024, we want to handle it properly. For me, the sense is that we've been able to learn from those challenges and we'll do better going forward. Uh, and now, the changes that you need to do before the 2024 elections. Uh, the EC has placed, for instance, some reforms that it's seeking that changes be done to. For instance, we'll be having the continuous registration and now you'd require the Ghana card uh, to go through that process. I'm sure that there are some Ghanaians in South Africa now who uh, are turning 18, they would want to go through the process, but the requirement is the Ghana card. I think, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, there are legal remedies being sought on this particular subject. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a citizen of the, of the Republic, I think um, the Ghana card alone being the reason for you to be able to vote, is, it's, it's a bit not for me. But I think that um, Ghanaians will have to speak, Ghanaians will have to let everybody know that if that is the way we want to go, then the mechanisms and the systems that will enable every Ghanaian have their uh, uh, national card, we should put it in place so that we don't disenfranchise people, not because they didn't want to get the Ghana card, because they have queued, they went there to get the Ghana card, they didn't get it because NIA has a problem. How does it become my problem? So if we want to use it and the EC believes that this is what we have to do, then the EC should make sure that not a single Ghanaian is disenfranchised. But for you in the diaspora, would you opt for an alternative, say, would, would you want the EC to consider, say, the passport? Yes, we've, we've, we've put in petitions already. Oh, really? Um, so, so it's a concern? Where, where yeah, it's a concern. It's a, it's a big concern. We've said that if you want to use the Ghana card in Ghana, then use the passport for the diaspora and uh, uh, Ghanaians as well. Uh, we're waiting for them to respond. They said they are going through some reforms. Oh, so you've reached to the electoral Commission? Yes, we have. Asking for a special dispensation for yes. the Ghanaian community for the Ghanaian in South community. Africa and, yes. and elsewhere. Yes. Why are you making this demand? We're making this demand because most, for example, from South Africa, where I come from, we have thousands of Ghanaians uh, uh, living and working in South Africa. It's difficult for them to come home. Some have been there five, six, seven, ten years, and they've not been home. But they want to be part of the systems that elect governments in our country. Because remember, when they work and make money, they send it to their relatives in Ghana. So indirectly, they contribute to the economy of the country. So if they cannot get the Ghana card to vote 
and they have a passport that qualify them to go to South Africa. Why won't that be the primary document needed to be able to get into the voters register? So we think that it's, it's common, common knowledge. Common, the law will say what it has to say, okay. but we have put up the proposition that give us that opportunity to use the Ghanaian What passport. response, for instance, are you getting from the chairperson of the EC? The chairperson of the EC has not responded. The chairperson of the EC believes that there are institutions within the EC that will take that decision. And fairly so, because we know that she's not a final authority. And we believe that during IPAC and others, they will be able to come up with a decision on that. And we are also looking at um, ROPA yeah. and its implementation that will allow, uh, say, Ghanaians elsewhere, not necessarily to come home mm -hmm. when that time is due for elections. Yes. Do you feel we are ready to roll that out by the next elections in 2024? I think we are not ready as a country. But again, I'm proud of the way that um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has rolled up passports being provided for Ghanaians. You don't need to come to Ghana to get it. A lot of Ghanaians in South Africa walk into the embassy in Pretoria and they get their passport. Now, if you want to implement Ropal, to make it easier for all of us, I think that the best thing is to use a passport because that is what the Ghanaians living in the diaspora have. That is the, some of us have the, the voters ID card, we have the okay. Ghana card, others don't have, mm -hmm. but we all have passports. Okay. So that becomes imperative that we have to use that. Yes, but the, the, the readiness of our country to, to afford that, because we're not going to do this just say for South Africans, but, but all across. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't think we're ready as a country mm -hmm. looking at the, the economic situation we find ourselves in, looking at us going back to the IMF for support. Um, I think the IMF will also be deciding for us some of these things that we're going to pump money as to whether it is necessary or not. But again, voting, it's, it's, it's an inalienable right. So it's an important thing that we have to do as a country. Now, if we have to roll out ROPA, we should ensure that nobody is, is disenfranchised. The right mechanisms are put in place, the right systems are put in place, so that every single Ghanaian that is outside with a passport is able to. Why is the NDC always operating with suspicion? Suspicion. You, do you fear that the EC we, may we, get something wrong? It's not suspicion. We've seen an EC that has made um, itself... Um, a, a referee and a player at the same time. We've seen a lot of things that the Electoral Commission have done in the past uh, that have not been uh, 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 politically acceptable to us. But again, the EC is an institution, so we believe that some of these things, when they happen, we go to the Supreme Court or the court for them to give us an interpretation. But the EC going forward also has to know that a lot of these things that they do has a rippling effect not only on them alone, but on the Ghanaian economy. So we are not suspecting them that they've done anything wrong if they go according to what the book says. And if they go according to what is agreed at IPAC, we take it as a policy. But, but your party, for instance, has pulled out of uh, the IPAC engagements. Is it your hope that this new set of executives will do so? Our General Secretary, Honorable Fifi Kwete, is a brilliant chap who um, has been in the forefront of this uh, electoral things within the party for some time now. I believe that as a chief scribe of the party, he will take us to Europa, uh, in, into IPAC. And if there are things that need to be done and they are done properly, he's not somebody who will pull us out. He would ensure that the right thing is done. Comparisons have started, yeah. uh, Sam, and the permutation is also on. Some have brought up names. Alan Chermating has just resigned from Makufado's government. Mm -hmm. Uh, some say this will be the next phase of his um, political career. He's going to run for president. If you pair him with some of your likely candidates, wh wh where do you see the NDC? For instance, an Alan John Mahama 2024 race. That's not a comparison. John Mahama it's going to be is... hard for you. No, 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 no. John Mahama, it's a brand on his own. John Mahama, it's... Um... Remember uh, Alan Chermantin resigned from Nanado's government just recently. Alan has been part of the administration from the beginning of it. He has been the trade and industry minister. He's been a cabinet minister. Decisions of cabinet are what have put us as a country into the mess that we are. So if Alan has pulled out today and he wants to come as a presidential candidate, mm -hmm. what is he coming to do that he has not been able to tell the Akufuado administration to do? John Mahama, on the other hand, has been a president of this country before. John Mahama has done things that are near to the benefit of the ordinary citizen of Ghana. Ghanaians know what he has done before. He has his lapses. I'm not saying John Mahama is a, is a saint. He has his lapses. But compared to what we are seeing this time around, you can't say the, the, the MPP administration is not in... I am a bit curious, though. What is it that John Mahama has done in the last four years, when he was president, that he didn't finish? A reason for which he must, by all means, lead the NDC, be its presidential candidate for the next elections. Some say he's been, well... Self-centered. Uh, allow other people no. to come up. Allow other people to run. So, so, so there are policies and initiatives that President Muhammad 
initiated during his pre uh, period as a president. Now, these things are there for all of us to see. The, the monumental infrastructure developmental project, the, 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 the energy crisis that he solved now making us so self-reliant. Even South Africa, it's still suffering from uh, energy crisis with all they have. But President Mahama put in systems that have made us to be um, better than South Africa in terms of how he has managed the energy crisis. Yeah, so if you're done with the work, say thank you to Ghanaians. Uh, he said it himself, uh, I mean, leave when the applause is loudest. Yes. We've clapped for him. We're saying thank you, Mr. President. Just allow someone else to Maybe come. you right. have clapped for him. Well, I'm not saying I'm speaking. Maybe, but for, for us, we've not yet clapped for him. He still has much to do. And when it's time that he has done all of those, we'll clap for him. And trust me, President Mahama is somebody who will leave the stage when his applause is loudest. Don't you feel you feel, uh, you feel I mean, be having that leadership crisis in post-2024, say, if you have John Mahama, and I'm just saying, say, win the next elections? then selection process for another leader may be that challenge. Be because you'd have to market him it becomes, it becomes more easy for the party because there are great brains in the party that are going to be able to lead the NDC post John Mahama. Now, those people will start harnessing those potentials now. They'll start telling us what they can do and what they cannot do from now. So President Mahama leaving the stage gives us room to have enough of the leaders that will want to fit in his shoes. And as a party, we decide who we will go with. Uh, and we need to wrap up with the issues surrounding your reorganization process in South Africa as well. I'm sure that uh, you have some targets. Uh, well, what's the target in terms of contributing to the electoral fortunes and what plans do you have really to support the NDC this time? Well, reading the Professor Kosibotri report um, into what we did wrong as a party, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that even the, uh, the diasporan branches will have to do to support the party back home. I think the diasporan branches at times have been a bit uh, not so much involved in the party's day-to-day -day affairs. But now, um, under the leadership of uh, uh, Honorable Alessebe Fia, who is the International Relations Director, there's a complete revamp of the diasporan association so that they so much have influence and inputs to make in decision-making of the party. Um, I believe that this reorganization has energized the base, both in Ghana and outside, for us to be able to do our all and contribute towards the NDC's fortunes in 2024 elections. So your expectation is that you'd be winning, landslide? We would win the next election with our presentative leader, John Mahama, and it will be a landslide victory. <laughs> okay. National uh, Martyrs, uh, the year of return. I'm interested in that because uh, you're in the diaspora as well. How do you feel that uh, the government should be approaching such a policy? Because the belief is we have talent, expertise, Ghanaians out there that are doing so well. You, you are also in the business community. We could harness all of that potential and bring it back home to develop our country. I think that is uh, devoid of any political coloration. Mm. The government will have to look at harnessing those potentials because the businesses and the brains that are outside the country want to come and help grow the economy. But if we don't have the conducive environments that would enable us to come and, and showcase what we have and contribute what we have, obviously we will not be able to come and that is a slayer on you, you feel that's not existing that we don't have the structures or what do you see it's it's, it's becoming difficult for businesses to come work in ghana the bureaucracies are just too much and i believe that if we are a business friendly country we'll be able to grow but currently with the systems and structures in place it becomes difficult it becomes who you know and i think it's a problem of, of all parties that have always been in government we should look at businesses separate from politics so that we are able to help our people grow the economy whilst the politician gives us the policies and the direction. Give us an example, for instance, uh, which areas would you want the government ease restriction, bureaucracies and tear down all the structures? I think in the, in the you, you had an interview with uh, Nawule about this um, yeah. plastic, plastic menace. Yeah. In South Africa, there are organizations that have got government support that are working towards enabling young people come up with this recycling plant. Mm -hmm. It's a brilliant idea. Right. If the government can give restrictions and say, uh, 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 de-restrictions and say, look, come in with all your expertise and with the people that you want to come in with. Come, let's give you some tax reprieves. Help us in making Accra the cleanest city by re uh, uh, um, using these plastics. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a way to go as a country. Well, I'll take your message to members of the and DC, uh, who are eagerly waiting for the next phase of reorganization, what would that message reach them? The message is that the NDC is the hope for Ghana. 
it's not in our mouth to disappoint Ghanaians again. Ghanaians are looking up to us to come rescue this country. Ghanaians are looking up to us to come conclude the infrastructure pro projects that we started, the social intervention projects that we started, not for the benefit of only the NDC, not like we see today when it's only about the MPP, but a John Mahama administration would ensure that everything is fairly distributed and every citizen of the country can be proud to call itself a Ghanaian. You seem to be so positive about John Mahama. Because President Mahama will be our presumptive leader. And that's uh, Benjamin Kwashi. I'm grateful uh, that Thank you've been you. able to join us here on uh, The Pulse. You're still with us here on The Pulse. When we return, we'll talk about uh, government's debt exchange program. Uh, there's a legal tassel looming. We'll tell you about it when we return. Please stay.